Hey guys, Evil here from Vanquish Products. Today I'm going to show you one of the most exciting products from VP to date. The fully licensed Curry Rock Jock 70 Axle for Vanquish Products. The Curry name has been a mainstay in full-scale off-roading for years. And when Vanquish went looking for manufacturers to partner with for their next scale project, Curry Enterprises was an obvious choice. The Curry Rock Jock brings some pretty unique features to the table in the 1-1 world of off-roading. And Vanquish has stunningly recreated them in detail for the avid scale RC enthusiast. VP has implemented new machining techniques to produce an effect that very convincingly creates the illusion of welds along the seams of the axle. It also has some features taken directly from its full-size counterpart, like a replaceable skid plate on the pumpkin, and the trademark 60 degree angled diff cover that makes its appearance unmistakable. The VP Rock Jock isn't all about looks though. It also brings a modular design to market that makes it the most flexible axle system available. Because the pumpkin and axle tubes are available separate, you can mix and match components to create the perfect axle for your rig. These axles can also be purchased as a kit, ready to assemble and install if you just want a simple bolt-on part. Some new features available with the Rock Jock are the replaceable Delrin skid plates. These allow you to glide over rocks and other obstacles. Integrated rear lockouts that simplify assembly and increase scale appearance by reducing visible hardware and laser engraved curry logos to give you that extra touch of realism. Some things that aren't new is VP's commitment to using the highest quality materials available. The Rock Jock is precision machined from domestic 6061 billet aluminum for a fit and finish that is unparalleled in the industry. So whether you're looking for an axle for that rough and tumble G6 style rig or for that concourse winning shelf queen, the Curry Rock Jock from VP is the clear choice. Assembling the Rock Jock is very simple. For our demonstration, we'll be using the SCX10 front and rear axle kit. Because the axle geometry is so different than stock, we'll be replacing the stock SCX10 links with the titanium SCX10 link kit that is built specifically for the Curry axles. We'll also be using the SCX10 incision 8 degree knuckles and C-hubs which are not included in the kit. First, we'll begin by assembling our link kit. Thread on the Traxxas rod ends and pop in the eyelets. Tighten all rod ends down all the way with the exception of the steering tie rod. We'll adjust these later when we install them on our SCX10. Once all the links are assembled, it can be difficult to figure out what links go where on the chassis. I'll detail them here for you if you're building along. Lay the links out, shortest to longest. The first set of links shown are the steering links. The shortest links are the front lower links. The bent links are the front uppers. The next longest are the rear lower links. And the longest are the rear upper links. Once all of those are assembled, set them to the side and we'll start assembling the front axle. We'll begin by inserting the pinion gear bearings into the pumpkin followed by the pinion gear itself. Next, install your ring gear and secure it with the included bearing caps. We're now ready to install the axle tubes. Insert the axle tubes into the pumpkin and align the tube so that you can thread in the grub screw. Use some blue thread lock here and only tighten the screw enough so that it is flush with the surface of the pumpkin. Now install the four set screws and tighten them until they are flush with the surface of the pumpkin. Next, install the 5x11 bearings in the axle tubes, followed by the axle shafts. Rotate the shafts until they engage the center locker. Next, we can grease the ring gear and install the diff cover. Now we can install the lower link mounts and C-hubs. followed by the outer bolts only on the axle truss. Next up, we can install the knuckles. And once that's complete, install the cross pins and hexes. And finally, we can install the Delrin skid plate. 
To finish up the assembly, we need to install the servo plate. However, due to the design of the upper link mount, the upper links must be installed prior to installing the servo plate. Install your upper links using the included 14mm hardware, and then install the servo plate with the 16mm flat and socket headed hardware. For my install, I went ahead and installed the front lower links, front shocks, and drive shaft to complete the front axle assembly. Once I install my servo, this axle will be ready to go on the truck. Now let's move to the rear axle. It will pretty much build the same, with just a few exceptions. Again, go ahead and install your bearings, pinion gear, and ring gear in the pumpkin just like the front. Next, install the 5x11 bearings in the axle tubes. The rear axle tubes use a snap ring to hold the bearing in place. You'll need a set of snap ring pliers to install the ring. Once that's complete, test fit your axle shaft to see if there's any contact between the snap ring and the axle shaft. If you notice any rubbing, file a bit of the snap ring off until it clears the axle shaft when it's inserted into the axle tube. With that out of the way, you can insert the cross pins and hexes onto the axle shaft, securing it into the tube. We're now ready to mate the axle tubes with the center pumpkin. Insert the axle tubes and rotate until the axle shaft engages the locker, then rotate the tube until the alignment holes line up. Again, don't forget the thread lock on these screws when securing the axle tubes to the pumpkin. Tighten them all down until they are flush with the surface of the pumpkin. Now grease your ring gear and install the diff cover. Next up, we'll install the rear axle truss. Because the rear axle truss isn't going to have a servo plate on it, we will instead use 14 mm socket head screws for the top screws. Next, we'll install the lower link mounts, followed by the Delrin skid plate. With those in place, we can go ahead and install our upper and lower links, rear shocks, and rear drive shaft half. Our axles are both now ready to be installed on our SCX10 chassis. Complete the install by reassembling your drive shaft and bolting the upper and lower links and shocks to the chassis. If you have the proper links in the right place, your axle wheelbase and suspension should closely resemble the stock wheelbase. If something isn't lining up correctly, refer to the guide at the beginning of this video to make sure you have all the links in the proper location. There's just a few little things left before we can call this build complete. Install your servo and steering linkage. Adjust the drag link so that the servo horn is 90 degrees when the steering knuckle steers exactly straight. Then test fit your tie rod link and adjust the rod ends so that when connected to the other knuckle, they both steer exactly straight. Once you're satisfied with the alignment, you can install the lock nuts and check the endpoints on your radio. And that completes our install. Double check for any binding or any loose hardware. Install your wheels and you're ready to hit the trail. Thanks for watching today. We'll catch you on the next one.